Hello, Popcorn Recap here. Today we will be talking about the Ted Bundy movie. It opens up with Liz visiting Ted Bundy. He's happy to see her but Liz looks apprehensive. Liz recalls the first time they met, and Ted says he fell in love with her the moment he saw Liz. In the past, Liz and Joanna go to a college bar even though Liz is a single mom and a secretary. Ted has been staring at Liz the entire night. Liz goes to the jukebox and Ted begins to flirt with her. Ted is very charming and charismatic. He dances with Liz and kisses her. Eventually they go to her house and Liz expects Ted to be turned off that she's a single mom, but he's into MILFs. She wakes up worried because her child is missing but Ted is just babysitting her. Of course, Liz instantly falls for him. The movie transitions to them enjoying their time together as Molly starts to grow older. News reports says that from January to July of 1974, King County had an alarming amount of young women being attacked and their lives ending. They mention George Ann Hawkins, who was a college student walking home alone. Then they mention Janice OTT and Denise Naslund, who vanished in Lake Sammamish State Park in Colorado. Supposedly a charming man was seen talking to them with his arm in a cast. In Utah 1975, Ted is pulled over. He ran two stop signs and starts trying to charm the police officer. The cop is suspicious since Ted's license says he lives in Seattle. The cop doesn't buy any of Ted's excuses, so he cuffs him. Cops drop all of the suspicious items from Ted's duffel bag and they question him about the town of Murray. They line up a bunch of men and ask them to repeat a phrase. A woman points out Ted Bundy as the perpetrator. He's charged with kidnapping and assault. He posts bail and is able to go back to Seattle to see Liz. Once Ted comes home, Liz slaps him because Ted is on the newspaper and it has all the details about his arrest. He tries to assure her that nothing is wrong. Then Molly walks in super excited to see Ted. Liz lets everything slide for now since Ted is so good with her daughter. At the diner, Ted says he'll be pulling an all-nighter at the law library to study for his trial. This sparks Liz to question him about the charges. He lies saying that the woman was coerced into naming Ted as her kidnapper. He deflects by saying the car outside has been following him since Utah. While Ted is at the library looking for his next girl, Liz looks through Ted's suitcase. A girl recognizes Ted from the newspaper, so she gets security to haul him out. Ted notices the same car from the diner earlier and yells at the car. He wonders who sent the car to follow him. At night, Ted is under the covers and Liz is suspicious at first, but then Ted proposes to her. In February 1976, Ted's lawyer explains how Ted's name ended up on a suspect list for the missing women since he drives the same car as the suspect. During the trial, Carol describes how Ted was holding a gun to her head. Luckily she was able to get out of the car and run away. She points at Ted as the perpetrator then Ted looks at his wife. Ted's lawyer John points out that Carol was given a picture of Ted before she picked him out as her perpetrator. At that time, Carol said she can't really say for sure that Ted was the perpetrator or not. Carol admits that law enforcement told her that it was a Volkswagen and it wasn't her that identified the vehicle. Later, while Ted and Liz get a dog at the rescue, they run into Carol Ann. There's obviously some history between Ted and Carol. Then, the dog that Liz wants to get clearly doesn't like Ted, but Ted looks at him in a creepy way and the dog immediately becomes submissive. They end up not getting a dog so they do doggy style instead. Eventually, Ted is found guilty for kidnapping and assault. On March 1976, Ted is processed at Utah State Prison. Later, a detective from Colorado reaches out to Liz. She's confused because the detective is insinuating Ted committed more crimes in Colorado. John gives Ted some bad news about being extradited for murder in Colorado, and John isn't able to help him because he's not licensed in the state of Colorado. Liz tells her friend Joanna why Ted is in Colorado, 
but Liz doesn't believe any of the charges against Ted. Joanna tries to question it all but this basically pisses Liz off. Before Ted's Colorado trial, Liz grows distant from Ted. She doesn't even answer his calls. Ted Bundy starts to do interviews and doubles down on his innocence. During a pre-trial recess, Ted makes a pretend phone call to Liz. The deputy gets distracted by a beautiful woman in the courtroom. Bundy jumps out the window and before the deputy realizes, Ted is running for his life. Back at home, Liz in denial again and Joanna tries to reel her back to reality. She reminds Liz that Ted is a suspect for multiple murders. Eventually Ted is caught and Liz goes to see him. Ted got Liz a book called Perpillin for Christmas. The book is about a man who tries to prove his innocence. Liz wants to end the relationship especially since Ted will be getting a longer life sentence for escaping. Ted begs for Liz not to end it, but Liz basically has to force herself to leave. Eventually Liz starts to get closer to her co-worker Jerry, while Ted begins another escape plan. Finally, Ted manages to escape again. Detective Mike pays Liz a visit and reminds her that if she knows anything, she could be charged for aiding and abetting. He hands Liz Ted Bundy's file so she knows the gravity of the situation. Two weeks later in Florida, Ted is partying with two college girls. Eventually news reports that a man had killed two women at a sorority party, 20-year-old Lisa Levi and 21-year-old Margaret Bowman. He took advantage of one of the girls then beat three other sleeping girls. Then struck again six blocks away, almost killing another woman. Eventually Ted is pulled over. Ted attacks the police officer then runs away. At home, Liz gets a phone call from Ted again claiming he's innocent, but Liz hangs up the phone. Can the sheriff, who is up for re-election in Florida makes a media spectacle of catching Ted Bundy? Ted constantly calls Liz but Liz ignores it as the evidence against Ted starts piling. Eventually he gets Carol and to visit him in prison and starts to manipulate her into thinking he didn't commit any of the crimes. Carol Ann agrees to move to Florida so that Ted could have a familiar face around. While being a shut-in and reading her book, Jerry pays Liz a visit and gives her some soup. She invites Jerry in. His lawyer tries to convince Ted to plead guilty so he can get a life sentence instead of the death penalty, but Ted refuses. Ted realizes Carol and can be used to try to sway the public's opinion of him. The day of his trial finally comes and it's a huge media spectacle since it's being televised. The prosecutor Larry Simpson describes in graphic detail what Bundy did to the sorority girls. Everything from smashing their face with a log, bite marks, rape, and strangulation. Liz watches from home and many young girls are shown in the courtroom, all of which are fans of Bundy because they think he's hot and innocent. In court, Ted shows his charisma by taking over and objecting the detective's claims that he confessed to him. Jerry and Liz watch the trial from home, but Jerry looks worried as he notices Liz getting reeled into Bundy's charisma once again. Bundy's mom visits him and tries to convince him to plead guilty so that he doesn't get the death penalty. Carol even tries to convince him as well. Ted gets angry at Carol for bringing his mom into all of this mess. In the courtroom, Ted decides not to plead guilty and wants to excuse his lawyer from his counsel. The lawyer walks off in anger and the courtroom erupts. Later, Ted's teeth is used as evidence to show that it matches with the bite marks on one of his victims. Ted decides to to make a spectacle by mocking the teeth expert and the judge is pissed. After the proceeding, Ted calls Liz but Jerry answers the phone. Ted leaves a message saying he loves Liz, but Jerry just hangs up. At night, Liz remembers the times she spent with Ted. She's obviously still in love with him. However the next day, Ted porks Carol since they bribed the guard. After Ted finishes, he doesn't look at Carol Ann, so she wonders if Ted is still in love with Liz. She realizes how stupid she is for uprooting her life for Ted. Ted ends up convincing Carol that he loves her and wants to marry her. 
This leads to Carol taking the stand for Ted and claiming that he didn't have the chip on his tooth when the crimes were committed. The judge dismisses all of this since they would need to get new evidence for the case. Ted is pissed off at this point, but decides to propose to Carol in front of everyone and claims they are now married. At home, Jerry turns off the TV. Liz wonders if Ted was the one who called the other day and Jerry says it doesn't matter. Ted is slowly killing her inside because Liz is allowing him to. Liz admits that Jerry and her will never have the same bond and it's revealed that Liz was the one who gave Ted's name to the police when the girls went missing in Colorado. Liz feels guilty for reporting Ted and Jerry reiterates to let Ted go. Right before the verdict, Carol and reveals that she's pregnant. The jury finds Ted Bundy guilty for all of his murders against the two women and attempted murder of all the other women as well. The judge rules the death penalty by electric chair and Ted doubles down again on his lies. Ted cries while doing this and cries more while the judge says Ted could have been a great lawyer had he gone a different path. Ten years later, Liz receives her last letter from Ted. It's 1989 and Ted is about to be executed. We're back to the opening scene of the movie where Liz visits Ted in prison. Ted again lies about his involvement with the murders. Liz eventually admits to Ted that she was the one who reported him to the police. She tells him that she's always felt guilty for not having saved those girls, but she realizes now that it is not her guilt to hold. Ted said that he's buying some time by admitting he did the murders, even though it's not true, he says. Liz feels terrible for allowing Ted to be alone with Molly since Ted also killed a 12-year-old girl. Liz opens up a file to show a decapitated girl. She begs Ted to explain what happened to her head. Ted writes it down on the window while the movie shows Ted hitting her unconscious. Ted used a hacksaw to chop her head off. Liz is disturbed and leaves. She goes to the hallway to cry, while remembering all the good times in the past. Apparently when Ted was under the covers, he was staring at Liz's body creepily. Jerry and Molly pick up Liz and Liz seems more relieved now that she has the full truth. Ted Bundy was executed on the 24th of January 1989 and confessed to over 30 murders. Experts think the number is higher. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.